All right, here's another question from Vector Calculus. And I'm going to do the first part, part A. Now, part A is actually harder than part B. Part A asks you to do the following. Suppose you've got a function of three variables, phi, which we're going to call a scalar field, defined by this uh, function here. We're asked to compute or calculate the direction. So we're looking for a direction here, right? Which we can use a vector to, to show that direction. The direction of the maximum rate of change of phi at a point and the maximum value of the directional derivative at that point. Okay, so in the first instance, we're looking for a direction. And in the second part, we're looking for the maximum value of the directional derivative. Okay, so the direction of the maximum rate of change of phi at this point. Okay, so it's like a two part problem, part A. Okay, so we're going to use the uh, directional derivative and a dot product. Okay, all right. So the directional derivative of uh, phi at p in the direction of, say, u. Don't know what u is. That's actually what the question is asking us to, to, find, to find out. This is the notation. The u, the u hat means a unit vector, and it's just a dot product involving the gradient at the point P and the, a unit vector in the direction of whatever vector we're, we're using. Okay, whatever direction, whatever u is. That's what we've actually got to find in this problem. Okay, now, for these kind of problems, this is actually the key starting point. Because I know with a dot product, I can actually write a dot product in terms of lengths and angles, right? The dot product is just the product of the length times the cosine of the angle between two vectors. Okay, you learn that in a first course in vectors, right? So if I was to extend this a little bit, so these double lines mean uh, length or magnitude of these two vectors. This angle is drive, pretty much driving the calculations now. Now, if I take the length of a vector that has, that has length 1, a unit vector, right? It's, this is going to disappear. This is going to become 1 because the length of a unit vector is always 1. Okay? Okay? Times cos theta. So this part now is really driving our investigation. Okay? The question is, what's the direction of the maximum rate of change of phi at this point? Okay, we can answer that now. When does cosine theta, theta here is an angle between 0 and pi radians, right? 0 and 180 degrees. When does cosine, what's the maximum value of the cosine function? Anyone? One? One, that's it. Don't be scared. Speak up. Number one, right. And what's the minimum value of the cosine function? Negative one, right. So this will be a maximum this will have a maximum value when this equals one and a minimum value when this equals negative one. Right? So what angle between zero and pi gives you cosine of theta equals one? Zero, right. So, the maximum value will be when theta equals zero. In other words, the, when the angle between these two vectors is zero, then in other words, they're pointing in the same direction. And the, and the maximum value will be this. Okay, let's put the P in and, and see how it works. Hence, 
U points in the same direction as uh, grad 5P. Okay, we have still haven't worked this out though. We're going to work it out now. Okay. Okay, we know that the um, the gradient is just partial derivatives written in as a vector. Okay, so let's go up here and differentiate uh, with respect to x, with respect to y, and respect, with respect to z, and write them as a vector. Okay, so we'll get a new vector field now. Let me go down here. So phi sub x is going to be something like uh, negative 2y plus log y plus z. Uh, phi sub y is going to be something like uh, negative 2x plus x over y plus z. And phi sub z, well, that's going to be 0. And that's going to give you something similar to the previous j part. OK, so we're interested in this at the point P, the given point P. OK, so let's continue down here. So I replace um, x with 1, y with 3, and z with negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to get um, negative 6 plus log of 1. So that'll be negative 6i. When x equals 1, y, equal, uh, y equals 3, z equals negative 2, I'm going to get um, negative 2 plus 1 over 1. So that would give me negative uh, j. And the last one, plug in x equals 1, y equals 3, z, the z equals negative 2. The bottom will be 1, the top will be 1. OK? So what? remember, we're looking for a direction here given by a vector. This is your answer. Your ans you're looking for a direction. Your answer will be a vector. Okay, so if I wanted to write a concluding statement here, this is the direction of max rate of change at P. Okay, so this. So if you wanted to put an extra little bit in, you would say, "Okay, oh, that's my u vector." Okay. Now the question is, what is the maximum value of the directional derivative? Well, it's already done on the previous page. You can compute it from this thing here. It's just a magnitude. So, so this is one, right? So it's just that. It's just the magnitude of the gradient at the point p. Okay. So the max value of directional derivative at P is just the following. OK. So we've got, we've got this. All we need to do is calculate its length. That's what these, these uh, pairs of sort of vertical lines mean. OK, so it's negative 6 squared. Square the components, add them together, and, sum, uh, and take the square root, root 37. OK, oh, root 38. Thank you. Root 38. 